Live from WSLS, this is 10 News at 6, working for you. Right now on 10 News at 6, one year into the pandemic and healthcare workers are sharing their stories, how they say they were able to weather the storm. Plus, the search continues for a missing man in Roanoke County. What investigators say they know tonight about his disappearance. Good evening and thanks for joining us for 10 News at 6. I'm Lindsay Ward. And I'm John Carlin. One year after COVID-19 hit our area, Centra Health leaders are now recalling the pandemic and how it impacted their care. 10 News reporter Tim Harfman spoke with a panel of frontline workers as they look back on an unprecedented year. I was ready for quite the, the storm um, coming in. But COVID-19 was a storm Centra couldn't forecast, a health care hurricane forcing them to change course. This panel of frontline workers say looking back on a full year of the pandemic, they had to assess how they deal with the volume. It definitely, I feel like, made us all take a step back um, and really evaluate um, how we approach um, disaster. That approach included mobilizing new teams, preparing equipment, even converting Lynchburg General Hospital's pulmonary floor into another ICU unit. Clinical nurse specialist Heather Mayberry admits last March she wondered how she'd protect herself while caring for others. There was caregiver fear that we weren't going to have PPE, that we were going to run out, that we weren't going to have what we needed to be able to protect ourselves. That fear never became reality as Centra secured enough PPE, but initial roadblocks included a slow testing process and treating patients who were symptomatic, yet unsure if they actually had COVID. Centra reports they ended summer 2020 with 45 positive cases, though another wave brought more patients and a record high of 133 positive cases in January. Dr. Dr. Elizabeth Cook says while cases and COVID related deaths are decreasing, the biggest challenge is making sure people maintain precautions as vaccines roll out. Everybody goes into it like it's going to be, you know, kind of a, a sprint to the finish when this is really a marathon and this is a new, new disease process that's going to be with us, you know, indefinitely. In Lynchburg, Tim Harfman, 10 News, working for you. Tomorrow, the Roanoke City and Allegheny Health District will be hosting its first mass drive through vaccination event. All 8,000 doses of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine will be distributed there this weekend. According to the Department of Health, a glitch in the registration system allowed some members of the 1C group to sign up for a shot. And Carillion is helping to oversee the distribution and hoping to use a drive through method for most vaccination clinics in the future. This is going to be a model we've been talking about using for about three to four weeks. And so now we finally have the, the bulk of the vaccine that we could use this weekend to, to put it to use and, and try it out. The health district plans to continue the vaccination uh, efforts through the remainder of the phase 1B population, and they will do that through the end of next week. Two Virginia congressmen are urging Governor Ralph Northam to allow more spectators into high school football games. Ben Klein and fellow Republican Congressman Bob Good sent a letter to the governor's office urging him to increase the maximum number of spectators allowed at games to 50% capacity or 500 people. Klein says it's not a partisan issue and hopes the decision would help reopen the economy. High school football in front of 250 is great. But when you don't count the band and you don't count the cheerleaders, which I don't think is fair to the people in those activities, uh, you really don't have much room for folks. Klein hopes to see the governor respond soon so the changes can be made before the season ends. Small business owners now have the opportunity for one-on-one -on -one help applying for PPP loans as part of the CARES Act. The Roanoke Regional Small Business Development Center is going on a road show and offering in-person assistance for businesses with 20 employees or fewer. The director says money is still available, but not enough businesses are taking advantage of it. We're concerned because we're not seeing a lot of people take advantage of it um, this second round. And we know there are businesses out there who need it, who can use it. And we're here to help them do that. Business owners must, must uh, register for time slots online. The first one will be at the Vinton War Memorial, and that's coming up on Wednesday. Happening right now, the search continues for a Bedford County man who has been missing for two days. Yeah, it's 26-year-old Brent Gibson. Last seen Wednesday afternoon, he was headed to a lunch break from his job in Vinton. 
Police say they found his car along the Blue Ridge Parkway near Explore Park. 10 News reporter Shane Dwyer is live at the Roanoke River Overlook tonight. So Shane, the search has been focused in the same area all day long. Lindsay and John, yes, Park Service police telling me that as far as they're concerned, this search has not left the federal property here along the parkway and Explore Park in the area right here along the Roanoke River. But they've had no clues that have come in so far, no tips from the community. And they say that's not for a lack of trying, however, because they've had agencies and resources from across the region here helping today. 26-year-old Brent Gibson was last seen Wednesday, headed for a lunch break from his job at Cardinal Glass in Vinton. His car found here at the Roanoke River Overlook on the parkway later that same night with all of his stuff left behind. His family says he loved life and don't believe he committed suicide, but police are exploring all options. Search crews have been in the water the last two days, finding no signs of him in the river below, and his family says that's one of the reasons they suspect foul play. We think that he was lured up here. Why did he leave work? Why did he not go back to work? He was having a good day at work, according to all of his co-workers. We think that somebody picked him up or he could have been forced into the car with someone. Um, we're just looking for anything, any information that can help us find his whereabouts. His family asking tonight for anyone who was in this area of the parkway Wednesday between noon and three to think back to see if they saw anything. They fear the worst, but are still holding out hope that someone will come forward. The Park Service has wrapped up the search for today and for this week. It'll be put on pause this weekend. A lot of it has to do with what you see there behind me. That is the Niagara Dam here on the Roanoke River. Water still running very quickly and the water is above average in terms of the height. So they say they want to give it a few days to let the river level go down to possibly help with the search starting again on Monday or Tuesday. His family, however, says they'll be out here all weekend long looking for more clues. Live in Roanoke County, Shane Dwyer, 10 News, working for you. From fires to the pandemic, meet the newly named chief on the front lines of the fight in Roanoke County. His top priorities for his next steps. And the sound of a miracle for families in search of one. The Unique Way Q99 was able to continue its mission to raise money for families at local hospitals. Look at this. What a beautiful end to what was another very nice day across the greater Lynchburg area. This is a live picture from our Liberty University sky cam. We'll let you know how much longer we're going to continue to see sunshine before it's replaced by some cloud cover coming up. Know your zone. Get a tailored forecast specific to where you are. Your local weather authority alerting you to the next weather maker moving into your zone, making it easier for you to plan ahead. Know your zone only from WSLS 10. Battling fires and responding to medical emergencies aren't the only calls the Roanoke County Fire and Rescue Team deal with. They battle the pandemic just like the rest of us. Now, as 10 News reporter McKinley Struther reports, they have a new man in charge to lead that fight. Roanoke County has a new fire chief. As long as they'll keep me. As long as we're having fun and we're you know doing what we need to do, I, I have no plans on leaving anytime soon. And he's a familiar face. Travis Griffith has been with the department since 2002. I didn't have a lot of fire and rescue experience. I came in kind of raw, but I knew early on that this was a passion. This is what I wanted to do. So I kind of set some career goals, and this was one of them. During his nearly two decades on the job, so much has changed. They've grown, adding more crew members, taking on new roles, launching a Swiftwater rescue team recently, and expanded their reach. We'll have to grow to keep up with the demand. Griffith currently serves as Deputy Chief of Operations. During his time, he has secured nearly $5 million for the department, built relationships with neighboring teams, and guided them through the COVID-19 pandemic. You know, when you're battling a virus, you can't see can't smell it, you don't know it's there, it does make it challenging. Griffith adds Chief to his long list of accomplishments Monday, forging his own legacy within Roanoke Fire and Rescue. But at the end of the day, you know, our goal is just to provide superior customer service to those in need. That's what we're going to strive to do each and every day, and if we can do that, that's, that's legacy enough. Reporting on McKinley Struther, 10 News, working for you. A former Roanoke City Sheriff has announced that she will run for governor. Octavia Johnson says she is seeking the Republican nomination. Johnson says her top priorities will be creating good jobs, keeping our community safe, and building strong schools. Johnson served as Roanoke City Sheriff from 2006 to 2013.
An annual fundraiser shifted to still be able to help out folks while folks are staying apart. How you can help out even though the fundraiser is over. Q99's annual fundraiser for the Children's Miracle Network looks a little different this year because of COVID-19. Dick and Dave's Miracle Day has raised over $2 million in the last two decades. This year, they weren't able to let families come into the studio to talk with them, so they did socially distanced interviews beforehand. And all the money raised benefits the Children's Miracle Network to help out families at local hospitals. The end goal is raising as much money as we can to help these children that are in the hospital now and the children that are going to be in the hospital in the future. The Radiothon technically ended at 6 o'clock tonight, but you can still donate online all weekend long. Just go to our website to find out how. Your local weather authority, always watching and tracking for you from the JES Weather Center. Things are no doubt quiet here on the satellite and radar composite for us, but notice parts of Kentucky and Tennessee starting to see a little bit of cloud cover. A little bit of cloud cover will start to roll in for us here later tonight and may stick with us for part of the day on Saturday. So when you wake up tomorrow morning, the skies may not be quite as blue as what we've been seeing here over the last three days or so. However, they will turn that way again by Saturday afternoon. So we're going to be partly sunny to start the day tomorrow, mainly sunny to end the day. We're going to stay cool tomorrow and it's going to be breezy at times as well on Saturday. Sunday, we're just going to see a ton of sunshine. And although the winds aren't going to be light on Sunday, they're not going to be as strong as they were on Saturday. Rainfall forecast here as we look at the week ahead. Most of the rain is going to stay north of us and to the west of us. We're going to be for the most part dry here for about the next seven days. OK, late next week, come next Friday, we might start to see a slightly better chance for just a couple of showers and that chance for a few showers may linger into next weekend. But you need to know that until probably Thursday, if not Friday, we're still looking very dry with the bulk of the rain staying north and west of us. Temperatures stand for us right now 30 in Hot Springs. It's 37 in Blacksburg, 43 Roanoke, 45 in Lynchburg, also South Boston. It's 44 as we speak in Martinsville. The jet stream is going to lift up to the north here as we head into next week. And as the jet stream lifts to the north, we're going to have more of a southerly flow take place. And that's going to allow a lot of warmth to head our direction here as we head into next week. So yes, this weekend temperatures below normal, but by next week, temperatures go sky high. We could hit 70 or above in some locations as we head into the middle part of the next work week. Let's take a look at those daytime trends. Keep in mind average highs of this time of year in the middle 50s, a little bit below normal Saturday and Sunday above normal Monday. Monday and then way above normal here as we head into Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday of next week. Woo, it's going to feel mighty, mighty good outside come next week. Uh, even this weekend still going to feel pretty good because we're going to actually have sunshine around. We're not going to have to dodge any ice. We're not going to have to dodge any rain showers tonight. We're turning much colder overnight lows in the mountains, 20s to near 30 outside the mountains, 27 to 31. So most of us 26 to 32 tonight. NRV three day zone by zone forecast showing that you're in the upper 40s this weekend, middle 50s by Monday. You may have a little bit of cloud cover tomorrow morning in the highlands, otherwise mostly sunny Saturday afternoon into Monday. And then for south side, you're in the middle 50s this weekend, lower 60s by early next week. For Lynchburg, not a whole lot to talk about in the rainfall department. You're dry here through Thursday, maybe. Maybe a stray shower by next Friday, but really the next seven days look very, very quiet and across the Roanoke Valley. Look at that 60 Monday, 67 Tuesday, 70 Wednesday, 72 on Thursday. Ooh, we are going to warm things up big time. Come next week, Abby. Really appreciate it, Jeff. Liberty trying to get within one win of another big dance invite and a live report coming from Buchanan, the site of our game of the week. Sports is next. First week of spring football reminds us as much as things change, sometimes they stay the same. Both 2019 Class 3 region champs rolled up impressive wins. Heritage High blasted Liberty behind an impressive performance from their quarterback Cameron Burns. The junior was 8 of 12 passing for 176 yards and 3 touchdowns and added a pair of rushing touchdowns in a 62-7 win over the Minutemen. Meanwhile, Lord Botetot rolled over GW Danville and got a special performance from wide receiver Kyle Arnholt in the win. 
The senior star grabbed three balls for 50 yards and two scores and also had a pair of interceptions that he returned for touchdowns as the Cavaliers rolled 70-6. to For their performances in a unique week one, we honor the Pioneers Cameron Burns and the Cavaliers Kyle Arnholt as our first in 10 Players of the Week. Okay, Lindsey Ward's been waiting for that for months and months. High school football rolls on tonight. We turn the spotlight on the Three Rivers District and a quality matchup in McCannon tonight. Yes, our own Brooke Leonard is in northern Botetourt County. That's where we find her for the big matchup. <laughs> Brooke, tell us all about Radford and James River. So we remember how good Radford was at the beginning of last season. Then they got slammed with injuries. James River under first year head coach Tim Jennings last season. Now both teams bigger, stronger, better and ready to get underway here in Buchanan. It's no question that one of the best assets Radford has taking the field this season is running back P.J. Prelo, whose junior season ended early due to a torn ACL. Now it's up to James River to stop him. Um, P.J. back this year, and so that's a huge addition to you know what they were able to do last year. But the um, defensive line is really where most of our experience is, and so if we can kind of control that line of scrimmage. The Bobcats also have a six foot three, two hundred and five pound quarterback in Zane Roop, who's heading to Emory and Henry in the fall. It's awesome having a dynamic quarterback Zane is awesome dude we can rely on him so much but the Knights have shown in one game that they have a guy under center who was a force to be reckoned with as well I'm sure they got a pretty good freshman quarterback so we'll have to key on him a little bit and just key on the passing game contain the run game and we should be fine I think he's a left-handed kid he's athletic it seems like so he runs pretty well it's week two for James River but tonight is the opener for Radford but after this year, if there's one thing both teams know how to prepare for, it's the unknown. Um, you just don't know yet how fast everybody is and stuff. And I think we just want to get out there and see where we're at and go from there. Abby, it's eerily quiet here since we started that sports block. The wind has died down. Both teams are out here warming up. I think it's going to be a really interesting game. And, of course, we'll have all the highlights at 11 on 1st and 10. At the game of the week, James River versus Radford, I'm Brooke Leonard. Back to you. All right, thanks, Brooke. And we'll take quiet as long as it stays dry, right? Salem at PH, <laughs> both 2-0. and Lord Botetot will visit the Colonels tonight. How about Class 2 champ Appomattox County? They're off and running. They will travel to William Campbell. Plenty more coming tonight at about 11.10. It's first and 10 at 11.10. All right, and we'll know who Liberty's playing after the 7 o'clock game tonight at 11, obviously. ACC Women's Tournament, Virginia Tech NC State is underway. It's currently 11-10. to 10. Full report coming tonight on first and 10. I want to mention Louisville and Syracuse have advanced on the women's side. Radford women out of the Big South Tournament because of COVID. That's happening next week. And the Ferrum women advance to the ODAC semis because Bridgewater is out. Three little awards, one big highlight. We cut it out. Arnold Palmer Invitational. Good day for golf. Good day for fishing. This bird of prey has sights set on dinner. Does he reel one in? Yes, he does. You'll get a look at the catch of the day. John Carlin approved. Wow. Cut it out. <laughs> that was a big bass. Golfing yes. and fishing. There Nightly you go. news coming up next. We'll see you at 7.